<laughs> yeah, okay. I start now. So, yeah, my name is Graham Raman. I don't know how many students are joining to my lecture now. I think there are like one group. Group one from Udayana, five student. Group uh -huh. two from Japan, uh, from KGU, uh, five student. And group three also from uh, from Udayana, five students. So total will be uh, 15 student. So totally 15 students joining on this lecture, right? So 10 students from Udayana University and five students from uh, yes. KGU, okay? Transgaffin University. Yeah, it's my pleasure to be here again after we we held the the summer school last last year through pandemic <laughs> COVID pandemic. Yeah, we we have been uh running uh three years of uh online summer school during uh COVID pandemic. So I hope now everything is going well. Also, they are in Japan now. Indonesia, uh, yeah, I think everything already getting better with the COVID pandemic. So on this occasion, I would like to, I would like to uh, deliver of my uh, lecture uh, with. Yeah, with the subject about the marine debris. So I'm belonging to the Udayana University. Uh, now I am as a president for academic and planning in faculty of marine science and fisheries, and also have a cross uh, job in in Center for Remote Sensing and Ocean Sciences. Uh, we call it uh, CRESOS, and I do uh, several lessons on marine debris and also numerical simulation in order to identify of the uh, greater in the in the ocean to understand how the 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 greater uh, dispersion in the ocean through numerical simulation and also uh, supporting by the satellite imagery particularly in the in the coastal area. So it's still a challenge uh, to clearly understand about the marine debris or marine litter. There are several several uh, several terminology about the marine debris we, we usually call marine litter, marine debris and then that, that is the same. The, the definition is the same. So, if you familiar with marine litter, it is, it is the same with the marine debris. So, this marine debris is still a challenge for national and international issue. And now, trying to take by many of organizations in the world, including in Indonesia. Uh, marine debris is recognized as a globally significant stressor on the marine and coastal environment uh, with impact on marine uh, biodiversity having, that having been reported over the last yeah, four decades since I think 1960 and it's already initiating to uh, understand about the rhetoric in the ocean so there are also uh, socio-economic impact nowadays we have uh, influenced by this issue with uh, marine litter um, as the bridge also can can be a health and safety hazard and can also affect commercially significant resources so this marine debris issue uh, recently uh, being a global issue, global problem, and also trying to overcome by worldwide organization, worldwide scientific, uh, scientists, and also 
uh, among the country in 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 Asia, uh, Western country uh, that also as source and as the country that impacted by the death of uh, those of marine debris. So, uh, what is marine debris stand for? What is the marine debris stand for? So, uh, by UNEP 2005, Co and Rogers in 1997, uh, marine debris is defined as any consistent solid material that is manufactured or processed and directly or indirectly, intentionally or unintentionally disposed of or abandoned into the marine environment or the Great Lakes, not only defined for the marine environment but also for the for the lakes. <coughs> so it uh, uh, this means the the marine debris or marine is persistent solid that is manufacturing. So we not talk about the natural natural material that coming from the erosion, for example, or deforestation, for example. But it's mostly manufactured or processed uh, material, such as a plastic, uh, tire, for example, textile, and other material that is uh, manufactured by a company or industry uh, sector. So, if we talk about the marine debris, uh, it has been identified as a global global problem alongside other key environmental issue. So, marine debris is a key environmental issue at the global level and a major threat to marine and coastal biodiversity. Besides other pollutants, we have un very understand uh, from uh, yeah, like um, um, chemical uh, chemical uh, pollutant from the industry and etc. But when we talk about the marine debris, it's usually causing by the human activity. It's causing by the uh, lack of waste management in certain location or several location worldwide. For example, in the developing countries like uh, Indonesia, for example, we also still have an issue with the waste management that will influence and as a threat to marine and coastal biodiversity. How it will how it will be influenced or impact for the coastal biodiversity, we will talk uh, later on uh, with that thing. So the second, by the by the data that have been collected by uh, scientists, tell us that three quarters of all marine debris is plastic. This also have been found. Here in, in Bali, we have a group to collect uh, the, the marine debris data along the coastline in Bali, and we found similar things. Three quarters or 70% or 60-70% were plastic. And this plastic 
is a toxic tank and potentially hazardous pollutant. So we are very familiar with this plastic, not only here in Indonesia or even in Bali, but also in developed countries like Japan. We, we, we believe there are also so many plastic have been utilizing by the people or company or saw a supermarket, etc. But the difference is how it's how this plastic is managed by a waste uh, management. And then where the first plastic fragmented, then it called as a microplastic, becoming a small pieces of plastic. Then we call it microplastic. Before we talk about microplastic, the fragmented plastic is fragmented into small pieces of plastic, the size less than 2.5 centimeter and more than uh, 5 millimeter, we call it as a mesoplastic. But this is still a uh, small pieces of plastic that can be taken up by a wide range of marine organisms. So maybe we all, we all already understand how that plastic has been consumed, how that the, the last of plastic has been consumed by marine mammal, for example, like turtle, like a whale that have been uh, that have died and stranded into the coastal area, and then uh, we found uh, tons of plastic in the gut, and it as uh, suspected that suspected the 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 major. Uh, major impact or major uh, what, what I can say uh, that influence for the health of uh, of the marine mama and it becoming uh, distracting of the marine mama health and then uh, they, they are dying in the body uh, in the in the in the ocean and then stranded into the coastal area. So uh, when it fragmented into microplastic, then it will be uh, spreading far away. Can be spreading far away from the source. Even a microplastic also can be spreading this uh, or uh, spreading worldwide, spreading crossing of the. Uh, of the of the uh, continental, for example, or also crossing into the other country. The small pieces of plastic also will be have uh, can be can be able to uh, spreading far away from the source because when we talk about the plastic, the uh, density of the plastic is less than the density of the seawater. Uh, sea water. So the salinity of the of the seawater can uh, make it uh, less dense uh, sorry, the plastic is less than with the uh, sea water. So the plastic can be found in the upper layer of the ocean or the surface area of seawater. And it can be consumed by many of organisms, like a whale, 
Manta Ray, and also Tartal. And so the use of plastic continues to grow by the data. Even we uh, we have a problem, or in, or we talk, and so many countries said this plastic is a big issue in the world, but the plastic consumption still continues to grow. With the gold, with the with global production expected to rise markedly over the next few decades in order to meet demand, because we still we still doesn't have uh, alternative material to change the plastic. So this is a challenge for the for the scientists. How then we can produce the uh, better material rather than plastic? and have also a good ability like a plastic. And this is the challenge for all of us, including the university and the student. So how then we can make an innovation, how then we can uh, find the better material to change the plastic and becoming sound uh, environmentally. So the type of uh, marine debris by UNEP uh, 2009, there are uh, plastic. So when we talk about the marine debris, it's not only the plastic, but as we uh, talked before, plastic is a major uh, material we have been found in the ocean as a marine debris. <laughs> It can be uh, molded. It can be as a uh, molded, uh, soft, uh, foam, nets, a rope, a boys, monofilament, line, and other vessels related equipment, including smoking item, including smoking item. There are also uh, metal, like a drink can, uh, bottle can, and full text. There are also a glass, like a voice, like a globe, a person globe, a bottle, and etc. And also processing timer. So as I said before, it the when we talk about the marine debris, it it uh, because of the human activity or manufacturing manufacturing uh, material. So we will not talk about the natural material. So it becomes the processing timer, not the wood that coming from the urban area. But we will identify only for processing timer. Yeah, like uh, that also including processed wood, utensil, and bottle cork, and etc. There are also paper, like paper bag, paper box, including cardboard. Also rubber, like the rubber bag, tongue, shoe, flip-flop, yeah. uh, balloon, tire, and yeah, other uh, material that sources from rubber. And clothes, that's like clothing, Wipes, string, and uh, other kind of uh, thing that's sourcing from uh, clothes, from the textile. So, uh, yeah, plastic make up most of the marine debris owing to the the called nature. As I said, plastic represents up to 70% of the marine debris that are washed ashore on beaches or might also be found in the river polar region, thus becoming the greatest in abundance. So, yeah, when we talk about marine debris, usually we 
uh, concern about that this thing, uh, plastic pollution that polluted of our ocean. And by the data, 80%, 80% of plastic, the, the, the percent of plastic in the ocean is coming from the river. So when we when we talk about the uh, plastic quality of our ocean, then usually we will concern about the river then uh, uh, discharging into the ocean before end up into the ocean. So river is one of the way trans will transport it of the plastic from the urban area into the ocean. Because of the current mechanism, because of the current mechanism or water circulation in the ocean, then those of plastic can be found in the polar area, remote polar region, or is also remote uh, a remote island. Even there are uh, even no there are no population living in the island, but we still can find of plastic or even more than the main island that uh, that uh, uh, there are uh, as a place for living of the of the people because when the the the, the, the island there are uh, the people living there then they can make a cleaning up of the of the beach for example but for the remote island it's very difficult to clean up by the people so usually it will be accumulated in the remote uh, island or remote polar region. The accumulation of plastic in a certain area can be as uh, can be can we have a big impact for the ecosystem in the area. It can be fragmented, it can be uh can be covering of the of the uh, root of a tree for example root of the main root for example like in bali because in bali is a uh, tourism destination and so many people living here then when we when we find a plastic in a certain area then some people will make a cleaning up of the area and then it will be soon. It will be soon uh, recover of the ecosystem rather than in the remote area like uh, remote island or remote polar region. So, what is the plastic debris? So, the word uh, plastic is used to describe a collection of artificial or man-made chemical compounds. That come in about as many shapes, size, and color depend on uh, on the people or company utilization. So we can find a plastic in many of kind, many of kind of shape or size and colors. So almost all plastic will come with a symbol I, I believe in Japan in one of product uh, plastic bottle product for example you will find kind of symbol that represents uh, three rows chasing each other and within this symbol is a number and the number related to the type of plastic that the product is made of from the polymer, and this can range from one to seven, like uh, PETE as a polyethylene, 
terpelet it uh, used for the soft drink bottle mineral water uh, fruit juice container or uh, cooking oil and number two we see like SDPE high density polyethylene it used for the milk jars milk jars uh, cleaning agents laundry detergents bleaching agents shampoo bottles washing and shower soaps or we also can found PVC with number three uh, we call it PVC polyphenol chloride it used for trays for sweets uh, fruits plastic packing uh, we, 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 usually, we usually saw like bubble foil and uh, food foils to wrap the food stuff and there are also LDPE number four or low density polyethylene it's used for the crush uh, bottle a shopping bag highly resistant sacks and most of the wrappings and we also can see the polypropylene or pp number five it used for the furniture consumer luggage toys as well as bumpers lining and external border of the car and we also can see polystyrene or PS number six. It is for the toys as well. Tap packing, a refrigerator, a refrigerator trays that had uh, plastic wrap, right? and a cosmetic bag, costume jewelry, uh, CD cases, and uh, fending cups. And others uh, number seven. Uh, uh, other plastic, including acrylic, polycarbonate, polyactic fibers, nylon, and fiberglass. So, this uh, kind of uh, plastic usually we found, uh, and also put a symbol by the company to identify, and also it will be uh, related to how then we can recycle of those of plastic. So type of plastic by the size. So plastic can degrade into smaller pieces as it cannot be decomposed as natural, natural polymers do. The breakdown process leads to particles known as mesoplastic, as I said before. 5 to 5 millimeter to 25 millimeter or 5 millimeter to 2.5 centimeter we call it a mesoplastic and a microplastic defined with the size like uh, less than 5 millimeter all plastic size can impact marine organisms even my plastic. So if we yeah, you can see the figure that uh, this uh, figure is take uh, took from Spun Car Carter Chain Speaker Summit in 2019. So if you talk about the mega plastic, mega plastic, yeah, usually for the UNEP. Uh, only only the divided by three uh, kind of plastic for the uh, by the size micro meso and macro plastic by this uh, definition there are also several kind yeah several definition so for example swan car 2019 uh, specified by uh, five kind of plastic by the size 
kol uh, mega plastik ya, plastik tapi kalau mega plastik dan type of uh, plastik waste like a big like uh, net that's larger than one meter and half of marine by the adversely affected like the marine mama it found on the marine mama so for the microplastic define it by a size less than one meter and larger than 2.5 centimeter like a plastic bag and it also will possibly influence for the uh, marine mammal like a uh, whale and the mesoplastic as i as we defined before mesoplastic uh, that uh, can be secondary mesoplastic or primary mesoplastic that degraded or fragmented from larger size of plastic and it can be influence can be effect for the marine mama and also uh, fish and also seabird and microplastic microplastic can be sourced from the primary plastic like a micro bit micro bits or pellet that as a material to produce many kind of plastic and it can be effect for the biota that living in the sea bottom and also fish and nanoplastic can be consumed by microorganism like zooplankton even microplastic also can be consumed by the microorganism in the sea so <coughs> plastic when we talk about plastic from nano to mega plastic can be influenced can be effect for all of marine biodiversity from microorganism to marine mammal The larger plastic debris slowly degrade into small fragments with larger size strength and rings extending from meter to micrometer due to changing parameter conditions. These fragmented plastic with size more than 5 millimeter are known as microplastic. And if we see here, nanoplastic can be less than 1 micrometer. So I also have been said uh, primary and secondary. What is the primary and secondary uh, microplastic? So now we move to microplastic. So when we talk about the primary microplastic, these are all plastic particles that have been manufactured as small particles, less than five millimeter, such as plastic resin pellet which are used as raw material in the plastic production. From this pellet, final plastic products are made. So the plastic resin pellet is a raw material to produce of many kinds of plastic that consumed by, that's uh, utilizing by the people and company. Or industry. And another very common type of primary microplastic are micro beads. As I said before, micro beads. These are very small particles that are often used in personal care product and cosmetic as scrubbing agent. 
So I, I don't know how it was. Uh, it, it's still uh, using by the cosmetic or not, but uh, some of products still I I I saw in the in the shop for example to identify, but still uh, use by several product for the personal care product. Yeah, uh, that also still a microbit inside. So this is a primary uh, microplastic. So the primary microplastic is uh, the, the small particle that the manufacturer as a small particle. Not because of fragmented from the larger size of plastic, but the plastic that produced as a small particle, as a raw material to produce other kind of plastic and also utilizing for the personal care products and cosmetic. And secondly, microplastic, secondly, microplastic. So uh, when I talk before, I, I mentioned, I mentioned about the primary, my, uh, sorry, secondary microplastic because I talk about the fragmented plastic from the larger size of plastic. So secondary microplastic is all plastic particle that originate from larger species. For example, due to mechanical breaking of plastic. When plastic, for example, plastic bag descend in the ocean, it can be fragmented because of the sunrise, because of the waves, because of uh, the sea water salinity, and it degrading, becoming small pieces of plastic, then become of microplastic. So originate from the larger plastic and degraded and are fragmented, becoming small pieces of plastic that we call microplastic that the size less than two point sorry five uh, millimeter or half centimeter. So plastic by the shape, microplastic type of microplastic by the shape. When we identify a microplastic that we collect from the field, that we that we collect uh, then collect from the sample of sediment, for example, collect from sample of the seawater, for example, collect the sample from the fish, for example. Then we uh, distinguishing the type of microplastic, like this figure. Usually we find the fragmented plastic or fragment, usually, uh, usually from the hard plastic or pellet, is the raw material of plastic, fiber, usually coming from the textile or also fishing line or foam it coming from the styrofoam box of a uh, uh, fish that you utilizing by the fishermen to keeping up the fish and also film film usually coming from the tin of plastic or like a plastic bag so usually we found uh, we are distinguishing by five kind, five type of microplastic: fragment, cell, pellet, fiber, foam, and film.
Yeah, so this the explanation. The fragment, they are particle that originate from larger plastic pieces. Fragments are by far the most occurring shape. Yeah, this usually coming from the hard plastic. And pellet particle that originate from industrial resin pellet as a raw material for the plastic. Depending on their state of weathering, they can be cylindrical or spherical. Uh, film, yeah, as, as I said, this is a thin, flexible sheets like plastic, which usually uh, it uh, originate from a plastic bag or plastic sheet. They usually originate from plastic bag, plastic foil, or other uh, packing material. Foam, yeah, any kind of plastic with a foam instruction. This could be flexible styrofoam or other expanded or foam plastic such as polystyrene, polyethylene, or polyphenyl chloride, PS, PE, and PVC. And fiber, fiber, any kind of fibrous plastic. A large portion of synthetic fiber originate from plant washing. Yeah, this is coming from the textile of the plant washing. <laughs> And the potential pathway for the transport of microplastic and its biological infection. So, as I said, because uh, the fermentation of plastic is due to ultraviolet mechanical and microbial degradation, yeah. it, it originates from primary microplastic or secondary microplastic, and it will be interacted with the marine biota, marine organism, the sea from the surface to the seafloor, from the surface to the seafloor. We understand that plastic have less density than the seawater, but because of the biofoliate accompanying by the uh, any material or any organism associated with the plastic, then it can be sinking into the seafloor and it can be effect for the marine organism in the seafloor. So what is the marine debris impact? <laughs> Sorry. So that can be biological impact, chemical impact, physical habitat impact, and impact on human, like socio-economic impact, or even health impact, human health impact. Okay, from, yeah, before I continuing to the impact of uh, marine debris, is, uh, is there anyone want to talk or giving some comment or uh, question? <laughs> because uh, this still, uh, uh, yeah, the introduction of marine debris. I will, I will give uh, the the data on the next uh, lecture. So today lecture, I only giving you a basic of uh, our introduction of the marine debris or marine litter range from uh, macro and uh, macro and micro plastic and also the impact of uh, marine debris for, for the ecosystem for the human uh, marine and marine ecosystem is there any comments or do you have any thought about this uh is the yeah. I want to ask. Yeah, okay. 
Please your name. Okay, my name is Tari. I am from Lena University. So, uh, last time you explained about the number of the plastic. There are seven, uh, kasi, yeah, seven types uh, based on the material. Uh, so, it is, is it uh, classified by the dangerous of the material or just the code of the material? Yeah, okay, thank you, Tari. Uh, this type, uh, distinguishing, are uh, refined by kind of material. It relate to how then we uh, classify, how then we can uh, classify it, and it relate to the how then we recycle of this kind of plastic because uh, Every kind of polymer have a specific specific technology to recycle it. So when we talk about the circular economy, circular economy, how then we can make a close look of this material? How then we can make a, a close look of the material? Then we can reuse those kind of plastic. Then we don't need to adding any adding so much any polymer into the production. So we hope from this classification by the kind of uh, polymer, then we can uh, make a close look. So no of no of the plastic production will be linked into the environment because we can uh, recycle all of type of plastic. So that's the, 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 the objective. Why then uh, we distinct, uh, make a classification uh, by the polymer. Okay. Of course, each of plastic have a different uh, impact for the ecosystem, for the biodiversity. But mostly we classify it because how then we can handle, how then we can uh, recycle those of material after uh, using by the people or the company. Then we can recycle it and we can also uh, make a circular economy. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. Any other question or comments? Yeah, please. Uh, you can, you also can talk. You can also uh explain you talk about this kind of uh marine debris. This um uh, about the marine debris or marine litter or even macro and microplastic or you uh your experience do you know before about this marine debris issue or uh, maybe from a Japanese student do you have any comment or Maybe you have thought about this marine debris or yeah, you experience your experience about this micro or macro plastic in your country. Okay, let I continue if there are no comment or no question coming up from the student, then I'll continue the slide to the uh, marine debris impact. Okay, marine debris impact from SCBD 2016. So the data said, okay, I, I will show you the data. 
So more than 800 marine and coastal species are affected by marine debris through ingestion, entanglement, ghost fishing, and dispersal by rafting as well as habitat effect. And more than 500 marine and coastal species are affected by ingestion of or entanglement in marine debris, which include the effect of ghost fishing. The number of seabed and marine mammal species affected by marine debris ingestion or entanglement is steadily rising. Seabed, not only marine organism, but also seabed, are affected by marine debris. And there is increasing recognition of the impact of gross fishing with both ecological and socio-economic effect being reported. <clears throat> so, and microplastics are present in all marine habitat and from the ocean surface to the seabed or sea floor, as I said before, and are available to every level of the food web, from primary production to higher tropic level. Nowadays, we have been found that zooplankton as a primary producer also have been have been affected by the microplastic. So this, uh, yeah, this is very, very dangerous, a higher tropical level as a base primary producer has been uh, contaminated by the microplastic. Microplastic are also providing a new habitat in the ocean for microbial communities, although the effect on ocean ecosystem and processes are not yet understood. New habitat in the ocean for microbial communities. How then microbia are associated with plastic or microplastic then will spreading from one area to other area that's far away from the origin, becoming a new habitat in the ocean in a certain area. Even this is still not yet understood, but this is the challenge for scientists to find out how it was, how it uh, have, how it uh, influenced for the uh, for the marine ecosystem, transported from one area to the other area. Although laboratory-based studies have indicated that plastic containing hazardous chemical can have a detrimental effect on the health of marine organisms, this phenomenon has not been clearly shown in the marine environment. <coughs> so, nowadays, uh, there are several hypotheses that microplastic can be influenced for marine biota or even human health because the polymer can be absorbed of toxic material in the ocean like heavy metal, like PCB, then it can be it can be consumed by the biota or human where the people consume the fish, for example, that contaminated by plastic, that plastic already absorbed the heavy metal or PCB, for example, then it can be, can be uh, making a bioaccumulation in the biota or 
in the uh, uh, our body when we consume it. Indirect, indirect impact from the plastic to the human, or indirect impact from the plastic to the biota or fish. And this still a challenge when we talk about the food safety. How then we can make a guarantee that the fish we consume is is not contaminated by the plastic that have been absorbed the toxic material in the in the in the, in the marine environment. So this is one of challenges that can be explored by us, by as a scientist or as a student. And when we talk about the biological impact, ingestion, and anything else, there are 44,000 reported cases of ingestion and entanglement affecting up to 1,400 marine species worldwide in 2015. That reported in 2015. And this owing to the fact that organisms such as seabird, fish, turtle, and marine mammal often accidentally ingest marine debris because of its appearance that can easily be mistaken as food. Okay. When we have a transparent plastic or white color of plastic in the ocean, the marine organism, marine organism can be mistaken of plastic as a food. So the marine mammal can be consumed of those of plastic. Turtle can see the white color of plastic as a squid, for example, or maybe like um, yeah, as a food for them. So that's why many of cases was reported. Some, many of marine mammals contaminated by plastic, macroplastic. We not talk about the microplastic, maybe microplastic more contaminate of those marine mammal rather than macroplastic. When an animal is entangled, it might form and its ability to catch food or fight predator is firing or in cold water from aggressive or cutting action of touch the breeze. Loss or abandoned fishing net pose a particular threat, yeah, grid or risk. So loss or abandoned fishing net, it is we call as a ghost fishing. Loss or abandoned fishing net, we call it as a ghost fishing in the ocean. It can be able to entangle of marine biota like a marine mama. And it might throw and it's able to catch food or fight predator or spare it. So loss or abandoned fishing net is a great issue now because it can be as a ghost fishing in the ocean and still be able to entangle of marine biota. And this causes injury to or death of marine organism. So when we talk about ingestion and entanglement, for the entanglement, usually because of the ghost fishing. And ingestion is because about the uh, macro plastic represent in the ocean and can cannot distinguish uh, by the modern biota can be mistaken as a food by a modern biota. And this case can be cause injury to or death of modern organism. 
So, what is the risk of physical and physiological impact? For physical effect, internal abrasion and gut blockage can lead to starvation. Why it's happened? When the marine biota consume those of plastic, it can be blockage of the guts, and then those of marine biota can be lead to starvation. Like a fool in the guts. Those of marine mammal don't want to find a food and bleed for the internal abrasion and can lead to starvation and then it will be done. For the physiological effect cause carcinogenesis and endocrine disruption owing to toxicity derived from plastic monomers and additive. Yeah, plastic to to produce the plastic, like a plastic bag or other plastic from the plastic pellet, also need additive material. And this additive material can be a toxic material for the biota. Like the uh, impact on the sea turtle. So, globally, approximately one set of marine turtles have likely ingested the fish. That there are several impacts of marine turtles on sea turtle. Reduction in quality of life and reproductive capacity. Yeah, this reproductive capacity is one of issues when we talk about the uh, population. The degradation of the number of population in the in the ocean because this of uh, plastic also uh, yeah some of scientists said it can be triggered for the infertility and it can be uh, related for the a declining of uh, the population. Drowning and limited predator avoidance, development of internal external wounds, impairment of feeding capacity due, due to the build up of the digestive system, decreased mobility and predatory avoidance and toxicity, gastrointestinal blockage by plastic, block and passage of fewer eggs and cause internal damage, starvation due to uh, two of plastic in the stomach cavities, satiation, starvation, and general debilitation of often leading to death, blockage of enzyme production, etc. So, this is the impact, yeah, for the sea turtle from the medical impact. Yeah, this like uh, impact on seabird, reduce of body weight, inhibit, it is uh, similar with the turtle actually. Inhibit fat deposition, reduce productive capacity, spheroid plastic can obstruct and damage a bird digestive system, reducing its foraging capabilities, reduce food consumption, thus reducing uh, fitness. Uh, yeah, for the chemical impact, accumulation and transport of persistent organic pollutant. As I said before, plastic have an ability to absorb. Yeah, uh, persistent organic pollutant like heavy metal, uh, PCB, and etc. And accumulation and transport of POP, persistent organic pollutant, such as polychlorine, uh, bipenyl, and pesticide, like a DDT, for example, have been found at concentration that are in order of magnitude greater than the surrounding environment. Plastic accumulate for 100,000 to 1 million times the level found in seawater. And plastic have the potential to absorb chemical of concern from the environment and serve as a potential global transport mechanism for contaminants. Yeah, this the ability to absorb, potential to absorb chemical 
kosong dongeng parang. Dan itu licin lampas itu kan kontaminan from plastik. Kontaminan can be released from plastic to environment and by the by break down of plastic to ultraviolet. Plastic itself also will release. Tak sah dah kumpul sama biofibro plastik yang sebenarnya dikomunikasi in sibat and bentik organisme. Two ground class of plastic related chemical are of critical concern for human health. That is B penyal, BPA and catalase. So when we talk about the plastic, what the that related to the human health? When this plastic Absorbing of those of the of the and end up into the human body, the human body, and accumulating the in the human body, particularly in in the uh, woman, because the woman can the matter of the woman can be. Uh, have a baby, a woman have a baby and give a breastfeeding, then from this breastfeeding can be transferred those of heavy metal, for example, to the baby. So the baby can be contaminated From the early age, from the beginning, they can be contaminated. Yeah, I talked with the with the uh, doctor uh, five years ago. Endocrine doctor said, "Yeah, the this is a big possibility. The woman who giving a breastfeeding that contaminated by uh, plastic." That plastic only absorbing those of the of the can also transfer it to their baby. It's very very dangerous. <laughs> this aforementioned uh, chemical have a detrimental effect on marine organism, even at very low level. And plastic and it could be a road for PCB into marine food chains. So now plastic have been involved on the marine food chains. So PCB lead to productive disorder or death. A productive disorder. A productive disorder. Signal. Uh, and also for the human, also for the human, the increased risk of disease and alter the hormone level. So we must be very, very careful with this PCB. So for the reproduction, his reproduction or human reproduction. So let that to be we aware with this thing about that causing by the uh, marine plastic. We consume fish, but we not clearly understand that fish have been uh, contaminated or not contaminated. But we need fish as a, a protein source for us. For us, so this uh, chemical impact, uh, this phenol BPA, used for plasticizer and uh, can uh, can line of effect maybe estrogen, catalase, plasticizer, and, and artificial fragrance interfere with testosterone, sperm fertility, persistent organic pollutant, pesticide, pesticide. Retardant, possible neurological and productive damage 
this reproductive testosterone uh, impact was found from this kind of uh, toxic compound. The physical habitat impact, accumulation of the trees, the accumulation of the trees may be modified habitat structure, that is like level in underlying water and oxygen level may be depleted. This change can undermine the ability of open water and vertical habitat to support on life. And also habitat degradation, degradation of habitat of uh, smoldering, abrasion and permanent of sensitive habitat and habitat forming spaces such as natural garden and coral reef. When the plastic covering of the coral reef, for example, then the coral reef will be bleaching and will be dying. And plastic marine debris can uh, smother the bentos, reducing light protection and oxygen exchange. And the like fishing gear by ghost fishing, including nets and line, can settle on coral reef, also will damage on the coral reef. Like a physical habitat impact, yeah, decline in species, decline of vertical depth for the species and modification of the physical structure of the habitat. Indirect impact of marine debris may cause decline in species that are dependent on the habitat for foraging and shelter. And alien species invasion, invasion like microbial, it can be transported from the far away, from the source to far away. They yeah, drift on litter across great distance. This uh, alien species also now becoming a concern for the uh, scientists and also environmental issue. An impact on human degradation of the habitat and ecosystem services, ghost fishing by lost net and force can remove fish and infrastructure that are targeted by local commercial and recreational fish list that uh, aesthetic issue as well. Like in Bali, tourism activity also will influence by this kind of marine debris like in Kuta Beach. We experience by the accumulation of debris stranded in the tourism uh, destination. Impaired commercial and recreational fishing Reduce tourism because aesthetic and interfere with navigation. It's also make uh yeah uh, but can block sick popular or steering system and do direct damage to patients and also can be lead for the accident. Yeah, titan healthy and safety dangling in nets and land while, while swimming, yeah, it's like in sea, uh, accident in the sea because of, uh, of the uh, uh, fishing line or fishing nets, medical waste, so in the side of, yeah, also, we usually found, we also have been found the shootings or medical waste in the ocean and etc. Economic loss on fishing sector also. Fishing and aquaculture sector are major contributor to sustainable livelihood and any impact pricing from marine plastic litter has a detrimental effect on human welfare. And also declining of uh, fish population in the future may be also uh, one of the biggest can be lead to the human welfare. And marine plastic debris, especially through ghost fishing and microplastic pollution, have negative impact on job and income in fishing and aquaculture sector. Because uh, it can be linked as a uh, uh, food safety is particularly for Indonesia. Indonesia have a, a large area of ocean and also uh, as a I, I think it is one of the biggest uh, fish uh, production from the sea that can be as an export community. Also, will be issue when we export it in. When we talk about the uh, food safety from the fish, and it can be impact for the social economy. Yeah, this also uh, some of data. 
Tourism also have been okay. This is the summary from my presentation. So, marine debris is a key environmental issue at the global level and a major threat to marine and coastal biodiversity. Marine debris continues to have an impact on a wide range of marine fauna with many new records of species affected through entanglement of or by ingestion of this item, particularly various forms of plastic. And marine debris is a significant global stressor to marine and coastal biodiversity and habitat, and that input of debris into the ocean need to be reduced. Mitigating the impact of plastic pollution will require the delivery of a multidisciplinary approach across various spatial and temporal scales. So, uh, that's all of my presentation today. If you have a question, please don't hesitate to uh, give a comment or question to me, and I will try to answer the question or give of my thought about this issue on marine debris. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. And now I offering you to giving a comment or a question. Um, excuse me, sir. I have a question. Okay. <laughs> All right. Before I ask my question, my name is Penny Prabasari and I am from Udayana University. So I want to ask about how the scientists or the researchers uh, of filter out the microplastics on the marine like how wait what method they determine with determine the amount of microplastics in the sea amount Thank you so much amount, amount of, of how, microplastics. How, how big how big the amount of microplastic represent on the ocean you mean yes that's what I mean. Yeah, you mean okay yeah, okay. Okay, it's a various uh, depend on the location. For example, yeah, as our research in Udayana University, we found, for example, in Nusa Penida, in the Matare feeding habitat, for example, we found like uh, the range and the range of the of the microplastic, one to five pieces in one meter cubic of sea water. That varies depend on the location. For example, uh, in 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 Nusa uh, Penida Marine Protected Area, one to one point five pieces per meter cubic. In the in the Komodo National Park, for example, we found like uh, zero point five to one species per meter cubic. And some area in Kuta, for example, we found like uh, one to two pieces of microplastic per meter cubic. So it depends on the area, and also usually it also depends on the season. But we uh, afraid that the number of microplastic still increase by year by year because the plastic consumption, the plastic utilization by the company, by the people by the industries still rising and the waste management in the developing country for example still uh, yeah still not improving significantly yet even already there are improvements 
for the waste management, but not significantly reduce of plastic leaking into the environment. So I think that is the big homework for us. Rather than we talk about the number of microplastic that we found in the ocean, but how then we have a progress to reduce the number, to reduce of the number of plastic that is leaking into the environment and will be end up into the ocean. So I think that is the big problem we need to solve. We need to give a solution to the government, national government, local government, and also how that we can improve it of the awareness of the people. That is the big, big homework for us as individual. And also as a scientist, we need to give an input to the government, to the stakeholder, to the uh, waste manager, waste management manager and how then we can improve in the waste management and then we can reduce the plastic leaking to the farm. So that is my answer. I hope it can be answered your question. Is that any question or you have uh, another question? Uh, it's already clear enough. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you don't. Mm. Think of, yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, Hendra Sensei, uh, I have uh, one short question. Okay. Okay, so uh, you mentioned that the uh, microplastics uh, shows their uh, uh, end uh, activity as an endocrine uh, disruptor. Uh -huh. Okay, in, in... so yeah, endocrine, this uh, so microplastics shows their activity that uh, as an endocrine disruptor. Uh -huh. uh, in, in... Endocrine uh -huh. disruptor. Okay. Yeah, but uh, it's my, it's just my impression, but uh, uh, microplastics seems to be larger than the ordinary endocrine disruptor. Mm -hmm. Hmm. But uh, you, you also mentioned that uh, 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 microplastics can absorb uh, chemicals. So my mm -hmm. question is, uh, uh, does the microplastics directly exert its activity as an endocrine disruptor or uh, it's, uh, uh, it exerts its uh, 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 endocrine disruptor activity through the absorbed chemicals? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's uh, indirect hmm. disruptor because, uh, as yeah, some of our research said, that uh, the microplastic have an ability to absorb a uh, persistent organic, uh, persistent uh, POP, yeah? mm -hmm. uh, and then it can be indirect disruption for the for the marine biota and also for the human health. Uh, uh, as long as I know, this is still uh, the challenge for the scientists because there are not so many evidence, there are not so many evidence said that the plastic, the plastic is a, a agent, is an agent to bring those of the toxic material into the marine biota but need to be exploring more further to make a more evidence about the about the role of plastic or microplastic in order to be able to transfer those of POP into the bio or uh, human body. Is that you mean? Yeah. Yes. So uh, yeah, I. Thank you very much. I, I, I the challenge for, for us. I think I think this, this is a challenge for us. Uh, particularly, uh, I think uh, we've been laboratory can be explored that thing because I'm not coming from the the the, the that uh, uh, study because I'm a uh, yeah uh, marine scientist. So I think 
they are needs uh, 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 from other other discipline to explore about that thing. But that uh, say from some of the paper. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Are there any any comments? Not only question, but you also can be giving uh, your thoughts here or comments. Okay. If not, I <laughs> will giving back the time to Pabibin or to Sensei. Maybe next. 31st, I will give you our research, give you an evidence about the marine debris in the environment and particularly for Bali area or Indonesia and also explain to you what are our findings here based on our research team and also based on the recent project in, in, in Bali. Okay, uh, we will say I think that's all from me. I will give it back to you. Or okay, yeah, okay, I think uh, we still have 10 minutes. <laughs> we still yeah. have 10 minutes. Maybe, uh, maybe can I give some kind of the information? I think I maybe I think uh, Gede Karang, eh, Gede Hendrawan Sensei already know. Also, maybe no, we are concerned about the. How all the microplastic is is also important. So because if the microplastic is still new, I think it's difficult for them to release uh, additive or plastic softener. Yeah, but if the plastic is too old, I think uh, additive already disappear. But the other thing maybe the that, that, that is the what is it the happy metal attached. To the old plastic, uh, microplastic, this kind of the hypothesis appear like something like that. What do you think, uh, Pak Gede Hendrawan? Yeah, I, I agree with that, uh, Pak, Pak Bibin. I think, uh, my microplastic is one of, uh, yeah, I, I think this, uh, relatively new issue, new thing we need to explore more. How then the characteristic of microplastic in the marine ecosystem, in the marine environment, that it can be influenced effect to the marine biota, and how those of microplastic associated with the uh, other uh, material like uh, POP and uh, heavy metal. I think we need to understand the behavior of the microplastic heavy metal in the marine environment and how it interact and how it can be uh, associated and influenced to the marine biota. So I think that's a very, very good challenge for the scientists and also the, for the students to explore more because this is relatively, relatively new for us. Okay, thank you very much. So what do you think, uh, Tosen Sek? Uh, we mm -hmm. are going to close this one in advance uh, because we still actually we are going to close until 1740. Yeah, so uh, uh, to... maybe from uh, KG student, do you want to ask something? <laughs> no question. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I'm I'm giving the lecture in the <laughs> They're very close to the road, and I think it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some uh, students. Yeah, I'm very very sorry. Some students blame. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Liriko Kodera, uh, Cho Sang, and then, uh, yeah. Please, if you would like to ask Ririko Kodera Sang. No problem. Okay. Maybe Cho Sang? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's here. Okay. You also, of course, you can type in your question in the chat room if you want. If you don't want to. 
talk here, yeah, but you also can type in your question. This also okay. Or you want to keep the question for the next lecture? It's also okay. The so the subjects of the the presentation will be given uh, the next time. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. We will continue because this only the introduction, and then the next lecture yes. I will give uh, the yeah what we are doing here, what we were doing here. Okay, so uh, it's a bit earlier, but uh, if no question or no comment, uh, let's close today's seminar. Uh, uh, okay, no yeah, uh, no yeah. question or no comment. <laughs> You can okay. keep your question for the next lecture. Yeah, okay for me. Yeah. Okay, Bivin says okay. Do you okay. have any announcement? No, no. Just uh, be careful. Tomorrow we will have some lecture, and tomorrow in the end of the lecture we will have final presentation. Please pay attention, and for your consideration about tomorrow lecture, I think I have some suggestion. Please uh, check the YouTube. <laughs> I, I would like to show you. Okay. Uh, so, Bibin uh, Sese, have you already uh, announced that uh, uh, the lecturer, uh, lecturer is uh, uh, changed? Yes. So, yeah. uh, uh, okay, okay. Okay. So, therefore, I would like to show you this one just for your consideration, special for student from, uh, yeah, of course, from KGU and also from Udayana, uh, because uh, we, would, we would like to talk about a uh, lecture from, look here, I think you can open the KGU Cytex, and maybe you can open the part five. Yeah, the part the part five, this one. Photosynthesis, yeah. Sorry, uh, wait a moment. This is some, uh, yeah. This is uh, from, uh, wait a moment. Uh, yeah, Matsuda, Matsuda Sensei. Yeah, this one. Photosynthesis in marine science, uh, the part five. So at least uh, if you would like to study in advance to here, uh, and then also maybe, because tomorrow you will have some final, uh, what is it? Final presentation, presentation. but I don't know uh, what kind of the presentation that, uh, what kind of the subject or tema that uh, Matsuda Sese will offer. Any kind of the information from Katos uh, to Sensei? Uh, no. Okay. Yeah, this is only uh, in this uh, in this uh, video. Uh, they give uh, kind of the lecture, but about the theme, we don't know. What kind of the topic that uh, Masuda Sensei will offer to you? So please, just for your consideration about his lecture, uh, you can see in this video. Okay. Only that one, maybe? That's it. Yeah, okay. So uh, let's close today's seminar lecture. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, see you tomorrow. Uh, see you tomorrow. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Please click the. Okay. <laughs> see you tomorrow. Uh, is it okay uh, not to open the, uh, open the camera today? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's too late. Okay, no problem. <laughs> Next. See you tomorrow, sir. Yeah, see you. See you. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Anything. Okay. <laughs>